For what purpose does the gentleman from Florida seek to be recognized? Uh, Madam Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that it may be in order at any time on Thursday, October 13th of 2011 for the Speaker to declare a recess subject to the call of the Chair for the purpose of receiving in joint meeting His Excellency Lee Myung Bak, President of the Republic of Korea. Without objection. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, the Chair will postpone further proceedings today on the additional motion to suspend the rules on which a recorded vote or the yeas and nays are ordered, or on which the vote incurs objection under Clause 6 of Rule 20. Any record, rec recorded vote on the postponed question will be taken later. For what purpose does the gentleman from Florida seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and pass H.R. 2433 as amended. The clerk will report the title. H.R. 2433, a bill to amend Title 38, United States Code, to make certain improvements in the laws relating to the employment and training of veterans and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Miller, and the gentleman from California, Mr. Filner, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Florida. Madam Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman's recognized. Today, I rise in strong support of H.R. 2433 as amended, the Veterans Opportunity to Work or the VOW Act. The objective of H.R. 2433 as amended is to use an approach that is comprehensive and it's fiscally and programmatically sound to help a broad cross-section of veterans obtain or retain meaningful employment. Foremost among the provisions of the VOW Act is Title I of the original legislation that I was proud to introduce to help put our unemployed veterans back to work. Title I targets retraining assistance to 100,000 unemployed veterans of past wars by temporarily extending their eligibility for the Montgomery GI Bill. The advantage of this approach is that we are providing a reasonably robust yet an affordable benefit without creating a new program. Other provisions in this bill continue the comprehensive approach by mandating with a few exceptions that separating service members participate in transition assistance program classes. Yet other provisions facilitate the alignment of state licensing and credentialing standards with the skills service members learned during their military service to our country and strengthening the Uniform Services Employment and Reemployment Rights Act provisions. The bill also incorporates a bill authored by the vice chairman of our committee, my good friend Gus Bilarakis from Florida, to direct the VA to collect data to de determine the number of credit hours, the degrees, and the certificates in earned by those attending courses under the GI Bill. Most importantly, the data collected will help us to learn how well the GI Bill benefits are positioning veterans to get jobs in today's economy and market. Provisions from H.R. 120, authored by Mrs. Virginia Fox of North Carolina, are also a part of this legislation. These provisions would extend VA's home loan guarantee program to certain surviving spouses of chronically and severely disabled veterans. I thank Mrs. Fox for her continuing advocacy on behalf of those whose support and loyalty was so important to their veteran spouses. And finally, I should point out that the mandatory and discretionary costs of the bill before us today are fully covered and are compliant with the budget rules of this House, according to CBO. Mandatory offsets are covered by extending at their present rate funding fees paid by veterans using their home loan guarantee benefit and by limiting pension payments to veterans receiving care in Medicaid-funded nursing homes. These are both offsets that the committee has used extensively in the past and most importantly in passing a fix to the post 9-11 GI Bill by a vote of 424 to nothing in this House. The discretionary costs of the bill are covered by two additional provisions. The first eliminates the overcharging of VA by ambulance providers for transporting certain veterans and the second holds VA employee travel, printing and vehicle fleet costs 
at 2011 levels. To my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, I say that this is, in fact, a good bill that addresses a major issue confronting the nation in a comprehensive and fiscally responsible manner with the support of the veteran service organizations. Madam Speaker, I urge all my colleagues to join me in supporting H.R. 2433 as amended, and I reserve the balance of my time.